Hey, Sunshine State Superstars. It's Katie Farner, your superstar director. Welcome to Live Thursdays. Those of you joining us live, I am so excited that you planned ahead, paid attention to our schedule, and have made the commitment to be here live with us. Uh, so you're going to get the opportunity at the end to ask questions, um, well, and even throughout to ask questions. Um, so that's a great perk of being on here live. And um, yeah, if you're watching the playback, I'm so glad that you're watching the playback because um, we always say those who show up, go up. And that doesn't just mean showing up live because we know sometimes there's certain scenarios where you can't show up live. But even those who are showing up and watching the playback, like you are not going to regret making that investment of time in your business. And for live Thursdays, we really try to make it as simple as possible. So every other Thursday, so obviously we're doing one tonight, so that means next Thursday you'll have a break. So then the following Thursday will be another live Thursday. So it's literally just every other Thursday. So you can go ahead for the rest of the year and mark down all of these dates, making it really, really convenient for you um, to join us. And every month we have different topics and you're gonna hear from myself or another director from our family of teams. And even sometimes we're gonna have guests in here doing trainings. So it's a wonderful opportunity for you to show up, learn, so you can go up. So um, if you're here, say hello. Um, I'm hoping that I'm gonna get comments. I'm thinking it's not happening because I'm seeing, it says I have six people on here live. It only has showed one person, Shelby, and no comments thus far. I don't know what is going on with, hey Tori, I don't know what is going on with my, um, if it's my phone or what. Um, oh, it's working. Yay. It's so weird. I swear. My Facebook live is bipolar. Sometimes I'll get comments and then other times I won't. So I'm so happy to see the comments are working. Yay. Um, so, uh, again, if you're watching the playback, thanks for being here. If you're watching live, thanks for being here. No matter when you're watching it, thanks for being here. Um, so in tonight's live Thursday, we're going to talk about bookings and we are actually going to kick off our very own booking blitz when this um, live training is over. As usual, I have a dog in here with me and <laughs> so I apologize if there's any noise. Uh, I've got Duke, my little dachshund in here with me. Um, but so uh, let's see, who's here? Hi, Gina. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Lindsay. I'm so happy to see you guys on here. Hi, Ro Hi Robin. Yay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so um, as we talk about bookings, I want you to remember that I'm not just talking about home parties. I'm not just talking about parties. I'm talking about any bookings in general, right? So when I say, do you have any bookings on your calendar? That doesn't mean do you have home parties. It doesn't mean do you have, you know, Facebook parties. It just means in general, do you have bookings? What is on your schedule? Hey, Jessica. I want you to remember something that I learned really, really early on, and that is that your calendar is the best indication, the best indicator of the health of your business. What do I mean by that? If your calendar is empty, then that means your business is not healthy. Your business is like anemic, right? Um, you need more bookings. If your calendar is a couple things, okay, so that means your business, your your business is okay, right? If you have a bunch of things, that means your business is healthy, right? So um, based on your calendar, you can really get a clear, come lay down, Duke. You can really get a clear idea of the health of your business. Now, um, of course, what's relevant and what's most important is that your calendar reflects your own goals. So if you have a goal of, well, hey, I want to make like a thousand bucks a month or I want to make like 2000 bucks a month. Well, your calendar needs to reflect that. If you have a goal of, you know, I just want to pay for one tank of gas a month and that would make me happy, then of course your calendar should reflect that. So I'm not saying that every single person, you know, whether you want to be casual with your business or really serious with your business, I'm not saying that, you know, all of your calendars need to look the same. But I'm saying be brave enough, be brave enough to determine what your goal is going to be and then ensure that your calendar has those things on it. To, to achieve your goal. That's it. It's that simple. Okay. So, um, your calendar is always the best sign of the health of your business. 
So we're going to talk about ways to book events, ways to book fundraisers, and ways to book home basket um, and Facebook parties. So first, let's start off by talking about events. Who has done an event before? Comment below. Have you done an event? And when I say event, I mean anything. It can be like a little table at a craft show. It could be, you know, a huge vendor event. It doesn't matter. Just any kind of event. Sorry, my glasses are like needing to be cleaned. Um, if you've done an event, comment below. Let me know. Have you never done an event? That's cool too. Comment below. Let me know. We want to know um, who's done events, who hasn't done events. It's really interesting um, to see. I have love events. Awesome. Way to go, Lindsay. And I'm sure some of you have not done them, and that's totally cool too. You know, many of you are just getting started, and we know that. Um, I'm doing my first next Thursday. Oh, Gina, that's awesome. What um, kind of event is it? Anna, you've done events. Awesome sauce. Uh, so when it comes to events, there's so many different kinds out there. I've never done an event. Tippy, the time has come, right? Um, so there's so many different kinds of events, like um, this one I have on Saturday. I'm doing it with my sister-in-law, Erin, and it's called Spring Bling Fashion Show. And it is an event put on by, hmm, I think Claremont Women's Club? Hmm, I don't remember. Erin um, is actually the one who booked it. Um, so we have this event on Saturday, and it is a women's fashion show event where there are going to be vendors. That's it. And it was 100 bucks. We split it 50-50. We're both bringing stock. And um, if you're wondering how to do a vendor event with your downline, go to YouTube and type in um, Katie Farner. Uh, working vendor events with your downline <coughs> and uh, you can see a video that I have on it that explains to you how I go through that process and the uh, fair way that I found to do that a sisterhood bazaar at my temple see uh, so so often there's little events like that little events like what Gina's referencing uh, what I am doing this weekend um, I have an event next month that is a fundraiser event for a little girl who was diagnosed with a you know just awful um, illness I'm on a second Facebook party this summer. I plan to attend a weekly music event and I want to set up a table. Everyone in town attends. Awesome. Yeah, so there's so many different kinds of events. Like um, my sister-in-law and I do a big music festival um, in the, you know, early fall. Um, I mean, there's just so many different kinds of events. Uh, schools do events. Like I've done parking lot PTO fundraisers. Um, you know, churches do an event, do events. Uh, retirement communities do events like it's just endless endless now when it comes to finding events I hear people say all the time I don't know how to find events I don't even know where to start it's really 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 easy you just have to invest a little time right it doesn't just fall in your lap you have to do some work so I'm gonna give you my best tips for booking events um, so first is gonna be the Facebook event section I was talking with someone the other day and they like had no idea that any of this stuff even like existed and I'm like oh my gosh yes it's amazing so I actually took a screenshot of it and I was gonna post it um, earlier today but I didn't get around to doing it uh, so in Facebook you know you have your news feed you have your personal page um, and then you have like the messenger and then you have the event section so you want to go onto your Facebook account and you want to click events. When you open up events, you'll find that there are tons of events actually suggested for you. It'll tell you events that people who are your Facebook friends um, are going to. So like if your friend Monica's going to a um, local event with her husband Chandler, <laughs> friends reference. Um, <laughs> if some of your friends are going to local events, Facebook will suggest them for you. Um, based on events that you go to and you like, Facebook will suggest events for you. So it makes your job so easy to start looking for events. I swear you'll go down this rabbit trail too. You'll be like, oh, okay, I'll click on this event and I'll like that event. And then, oh, look, there's an event. I mean, you will you can spend a significant amount of time because Facebook just keeps recommending events for you. And then you're like, oh, gosh, so many people to contact. Um, that's how I find a ton of my events. Um, so that's a, a piece of advice for you, the Facebook event section is huge. So um, <clears throat> another way I like to find local events is by going to local radio stations. So like here in Central Florida, you know, you could go to Z88.3, you could go to Magic 107.7, XL 106.7, um, you know, K92 FM, like 
all these local radio stations, their websites have calendars of events. So that's another great place to find vendor events. So often you'll be driving around town and you'll see signage for events. So another thing is just to keep your eyes open, right? Keep your eyes open for events. Word of mouth is huge. <clears throat> so every single customer, all of your friends and family, they should know that you're looking for certain things. So like everyone who is a good customer of mine knows, like I'm always looking for vendor events. I'm always looking for new customers and referrals. I'm always looking for people who want to join my team. I'm always looking to party. Um, so they know the things. I'm always looking for opportunities to do fundraisers. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry, my allergies are crazy today. So those people in my life know that I'm always looking for these things because I've told them consistently. It hasn't been like I said one time, hey, if you ever see like any fundraiser opportunities, send them my way. No, I've addressed it with them a few times and then they've seen on social media and stuff that I do them. So word of mouth is huge. I also like to post on Facebook. So like I'll go onto my Facebook page and I'll post something like, um, you know, help me out. I'm looking for, you know, community events. Do you know of any events coming up in, you know, any neighboring you know, cities, you know, and even, you can even list some cities out. Um, and you'll be, you'll be really surprised to see when you consistently start doing that, you'll have people comment and give you ideas for events. Like someone would say, oh, you know, um, my kid's school is doing a little parking lot PTO fundraiser. You know, it's interesting how people will come out of the woodwork and really start sharing events with you, especially when they see that you're consistently looking for these kinds of events. Um, so that word of mouth is huge, huge, huge. So make sure all of your customers know, bring it up at your parties. And um, also, of course, be sure to be posting about it consistently on Facebook. Other direct selling association consultants. So this is a question that I get a lot because I see a lot of consultants doing like party swapping. That's something that I actually don't do. Um, in my seven years with Sensi, almost seven years, I have only done one party for a direct selling association company. And that was because I just truly really liked the product and wanted to. And I kept it very much on the down low. I didn't post about it on Facebook. I didn't even make a Facebook private event. I literally just by word of mouth told the few people that I wanted to invite and that was it. So I really have a very strict policy that I don't do direct selling association parties for other consultants. Here's why. I don't want to hurt feelings. Obviously, I've been doing this a long time. I've been to a lot of vendor events. So I know a lot of consultants for each different company. I'm not going to throw a party for one with one consultant and then make all those other ones irritated with me and burn bridges. I'm not going to do that. Secondly, I know that um, people are watching me. And if I'm sitting here posting, oh my gosh, I'm having this LuLaRoe party, or oh my gosh, I'm having this It Works party, people scroll through their Facebook newsfeed fast. They're gonna see my name and It Works, and they're gonna assume that I'm selling It Works. I don't even want that confusion to happen because I am a one brand girl. I am a direct selling professional. I'm not, here's the thing about this, and I say this all the time, but like, would, your, would you want your OBGYN to also be a dentist? No. Would you want your general practitioner, doctor, would you want to find out that he also is like a professional bowler and he just does doctoring on the side? No, right? You are not going to be seen or taken as a professional if you are trying to do too many things. Like, focus on one. If it's not sensey, that's fine. But pick your priority. Pick your passion and focus on that and let the rest of it go. Like, I want you to be taken as a professional. I want you to help me. Let's work together to create a sense of professionalism in this industry, not, oh, we just sell 700 things because whatever. Anyway, um, I do not party with other direct selling consultants, period. Um, if they want to party with me, great, but I'm never going to make someone feel pressured to party with me and because they're another consultant and I don't want the same from them. So if someone comes to me and asks me, hey, will you do a party for me and I'll do one for you? I'll say, you know, I appreciate the offer so much, but I actually, um, you know, know so many people who sell Jamberry or whatever, and I would just hate to hurt people's feelings. Um, but you know, you let me know when you're putting in your next order and I'd be happy to, you know, place an order. Or if I know somebody looking for Jamberry, I'll send them your way. Um, you know, so I always try to just be friendly, but let them know, you know, hey, sorry, I, I don't really do that. 
And I think that's a perfectly acceptable response. Um, so again, when I say things like work with other direct selling association company consultants, I don't mean party swap all the time so you look like you're selling a million things. No, what I mean is have one person that's your go-to person for every brand. So like, yes, I know a lot of people who sell 31, but there's one girl who's like my 31 go-to girl. Not that I buy that stuff, but vendor event recommendations and things like that. Um, but Michelle, um, Michelle, she's my 31 girl. Like, um, I have one girl that's my Pampered Chef girl, Michelle Matheny. Like, I would send any Pampered Chef stuff her way. So I have one person for each company, and that person is someone that I share event leads with. Um, like one of my friends from Origami Owl, she's my girl for Origami Owl, period. She sends me so many events, it's crazy. Like, every event she finds. And I am so grateful for her. So I give her free Sensi because I can never tell her an event that she doesn't already know about. <laughs> so I reward her with free Scentsy. When we work an event together, I'll be like, pick six bars, you know, or whatever. Um, so my point is, it is so beneficial to have like a go-to person for each direct selling association company who is your, like, you help each other out. You give each other vendor event leads and things like that. That is a way I get a ton of events. So when you're like, and I just made a new one the other day, I was working a vendor event, I didn't have a lip sense girl and I met a lip sense girl, she was really nice and we've been passing events back and forth to each other. Um, in fact, one that I booked for next month is from her. So my point is, it's amazing what it can do for your business. Um, so also talking about booking events, when you're at an event, that is a big, big, big way to find more events. When you are sitting there working an event, make sure that you network with the other vendors and just like be friendly with them, be super nice. And then at some point before you leave, say, hey, you know, I'd love to talk about like what events we have coming up on our calendars. Maybe we have some that connect, that intertwine. Like it'd be so cool to see you again. And you know, maybe I have some events that you aren't aware of and I'd love to, you know, give you that lead. And if you, you present it in a generous way, then they're going to reciprocate, right? So at events is a huge, like when you are at events, it's a huge opportunity to find more events. Not to mention, I can't tell you how many times I'm working a vendor event and someone's coming through the event with business cards or informational sheets about an upcoming event that that person has. And they're just walking around this event to find vendors and to spread the word about their upcoming event. So it's amazing how when you're physically at an event, you can find more events. <clears throat> they really do breed more. Um, so yeah, those are kind of some of my tips to actually book events. So I want to challenge you uh, to determine how many events you want, like in the next month. How many events do you want to set up for April? If you want one event, awesome. And I want you to remember, like, when I say events, that doesn't mean you have to, like, have a huge display table and tons of product to sell. These, a lot of these events I do are 25 bucks for a table or free. The, the event that I did, gosh, a month and a half ago when I got Maverick, the puppy, that's where I rescued him from, um, <clears throat> that event was free. That's where I met my Lip Sense lady and that's where I got my puppy. <laughs> um, but anyway... Some of them are free, some of them are really, really cheap, giving you an opportunity to set up a table and just have a few things on display, just have your starter kit out. You can have a beautiful display with what came in your starter kit. So don't be intimidated. And I also have a YouTube video. So if you go to YouTube and you search Katie Varner, it's called Doing Events with Little to No Stock. So doing vendor events with little to no stock. And then you can find my video on that and watch that and hear all my recommendations for how to do a vendor event um, if you don't have much product or any product at all. It still can be a hugely successful thing for you. So I wanna challenge you to, to set a goal of how many events you want on your calendar for, for April. And then um, during this booking blitz, we're gonna launch here in just a few minutes, I want you to really pursue events. However many you've got a goal of, start pursuing them and get those on your calendar for April. Did I say March earlier? Oh my gosh, if I did, sorry, I'm in April. Um, okay, so let's talk about booking fundraisers. So one of my favorite, favorite ways to find fundraisers is just by just living life. I always talk about your opportunity goggles. 
and how you have to wear your opportunity goggles every single day because opportunity is everywhere. Opportunity is all around you. You just have to be looking and you're going to find it. Um, opportunities to share this business uh, with other people, opportunities to book party, oppor opportunities to book fundraisers, opportunities to book events, like the list goes on and on and on and on and on. You just have to be looking, right? Just gotta be looking and you're gonna find them. Um, so when you're driving around town, especially like here in Florida, I'm sure in other states too, when the weather's warmer, there are um, kids and of, of course parents as well out doing activities to raise funds. So like how often are you driving around town and you see people doing a car wash? Go over there, get your car washed if you need to, um, and just ask, you know, hey, what are you guys raising funds for? Just be friendly. And they'll tell you, oh, we're raising funds for such and such and such. And say, oh, okay, then who's in charge? I'd love to, I'd love to talk and, and talk more about how I can help you guys out. Talk to whoever is in charge that's there at the event or at the car wash and just say, you know, I'm a Sensi consultant and I want to let you know that I do fundraisers and I would be happy to talk with you more about how I could assist you uh, with a fundraiser. They might say, oh no, we've done that before, it didn't work, or oh no, we have a Sensi person, or oh, that sounds great, like I'd love to talk more about that. Let me get your information. And never make the mistake of giving your information and not getting theirs back because that person, you don't want that person to be in control of your destiny and your future and your success. You want to be in control of it. So always have something to jot down their info and get their info. So that way you have the power and you can follow up. Big, big, big important point. Um, gosh, I'll be walking into the grocery store and I'll see some kids sitting out front of the grocery store. Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, uh, baseball teams, I see it all the time, sitting out there trying to just get money, trying to sell cookies, trying to hustle, do whatever they got to do. Um, so another in exact instance where I will go up and I will say like, hey, I want to help you. Um, you know, I'm a Sensi consultant, the same, same pitch, right? Uh, so you can literally find fundraisers that easily. Another great way to find fundraisers is utilizing your contacts. Like I said earlier when I was talking about events, if you want to book fundraisers, if you want fundraisers on your calendar, you have to really start asking people. Every single person that is on your list of 100, all your customers, all your friends, they need to know that you are looking for fundraisers so they can help you out and get you connected. So I want to challenge you as part of this booking blitz that we're going to do to pull out your list of 100, dust it off if needed, update it, start going through there and, and updating that and making sure you've got all of the people on there that should be on there. And go through that list and analyze each name and say, okay, Monica Miller, what's, you know, what's special about her? What can I ask her? Okay, um, her daughter is a cheerleader. I'm gonna talk to Monica Miller and I'm gonna say, hey Monica, I know, you know, Lauren's in cheerleading. Like, you know, do they do fundraisers? I'd love to talk to someone about Sensi fundraisers and, and helping them out when they need to raise funds for a competition or whatever. All you have to do is ask. And literally, the worst thing that can happen is Monica can say, oh no, they don't do those. Oh, what, what happens? What's the worst thing that's gonna happen from hearing that? Nothing, you just move on, right? Um, you're gonna hear no's, like, let's face it. I'm gonna tell you right now, you're gonna hear no's, period. I hear no every, I heard no today. I sent probably 30 invitations today because I have been really amping up all of that for my open house Sunday. I probably sent 30 invitations today. I don't think I got one yes. So what? I'm still gonna be back at it tomorrow. It does not mean that my business is doomed or I'm not meant to do this it just is part of reality. It's part of life. You're gonna ask for fundraisers, you're gonna ask for events, you're gonna ask for parties, and you're gonna get no's. You gotta let it go. You can't control the outcome. All you can control is your effort. And if you don't put any effort in, you're not getting yeses anyway. So at least if you put the effort in and you try, you have a chance, an opportunity to get a yes. Okay? So, um, Go through your list of 100, look for people who have connections. That's one of the easiest ways I've found to get a fundraiser um, is through knowing someone. So 
anyone that you know who has kids or grandkids that are in uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Taekwondo, you know, cheerleading, dance, football, baseball, basketball, soccer, the list goes on and on and on. Anyone that you know who um, is part of a nonprofit organization, anyone that you know who um, works at a school or has connections at a school, like the list goes on and on and on. Like if you really look at your list of 100, you're gonna see lots of opportunities to pitch fundraisers. So think about it, write your notes and offer. It's that simple. Um, other ways you can book fundraisers. Just sitting down, getting on the internet, and spending some time searching. So search dance studios in Lady Lake, Florida. That's where I live. So I would literally just go to Google and type in dance studios in Lady Lake, Florida. See what comes up. Call each of the dance studios. That's it. What would that take? Like literally, what would that take? The glare on my eyeball is so crazy. I don't know if y'all noticed that, but like the glare from my diva ring light, it makes my eyeball look crazy. <laughs> Um, but it's literally just that easy, like Googling and just, okay. Um, what's another town near me? Dance studios in Fruitland Park, Florida. You're going to get all the results and then you literally just call, call, call. Hey, um, can I speak to the manager or the owner of the dance studio? Are they available? Um, no, she's not available. Okay, great. Can I leave a message or get her email address? I want to email her something about, um, a fundraiser opportunity for the studio. That's it, and then just email her information, right? Um, or go by there and drop off a packet for the owner. Get the owner's name and say, okay, I'll come by and drop off a packet. What's her name? I'll, I'll make sure to um, you know, address it to her. There's so many ways that you can do this. It's just easy. It just takes time. It takes five minutes. Um, so literally spend the time getting online and searching. And this is just dance studios, right? Dance studios in, um, you know, Leesburg, dance studios in Ocala, dance studios in Claremont, dance studios in Winter Garden. I mean, I could search tons of cities in my general area and find lots of leads. That doesn't take but minutes of Googling. Can you Google? If you can Google, you can book some fundraisers. It's that easy. Um, um, Google schools and you can, most schools I have found, you can actually go to their website and you can find emails for the, the uh, people in charge, like the choir director, the band director, the softball coach, the baseball coach. Their email addresses are all on most of the schools I've looked at. Their email addresses are on the school's websites. Hello, that makes it so easy. So think about all of your local schools and just start searching and just start going to their um, websites and start trying to send some emails. It's that easy. You just got to spend a little time looking, but fundraisers, oh Lord, have mercy. If you can get fundraisers on your calendar, like your booking opportunities like are huge. Cause here's the thing. Once you get a fundraiser on the books, like you're going to get a ton of new customers. You're going to get a bunch of sales. And if you pitch the offer to, Hey, any parties that we book as a result of this fundraiser, like anyone who books a party with me before this fundraiser is closed, I'll give you 10% of my commission on any parties, you know, that are held. You know, offer a small percentage of your commission and bam, you're gonna get more, more parties booked. Uh, so fundraisers are a huge opportunity for you to get sales, for you to grow your customer base, and for you to help your community. So um, those are some of my best tips on booking fundraisers. Um, just again, same thing as, as trying to find events, trying to book events. These methods work. I'm not just saying things that sound good. I'm saying, I'm telling you exactly what works. Now you, the 10 of you that are on here live right now and all of you listening to the playback, like you, it's been handed to you. And now you literally either give it life or just let it sit there and die. It's totally up to you to breathe life into this training and make it your own and find your success and get these bookings. Like I can tell you all day long the best ways to do this and how I do this, but if you don't breathe life into it yourself and take action, then it's just worthless. It's worthless. So um, I really want to encourage you to 
start tackling this. And we are going to be in just a few minutes when this is over, we are going to be launching our um, booking blitz. And so I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes and um, watching your calendars grow for the rest of March and into April and May, because we are going to be pursuing bookings, not just party bookings, but fundraiser, event, and all party style bookings. That's what we're going to be pursuing in this booking blitz because we just want bookings on our calendars. Doesn't necessarily just need to be parties. Any bookings, we don't discriminate, right? We'll take any bookings we can get. Okay, so next let's talk about parties. So the thing with parties, any party, it doesn't matter if it's a basket party, if it's a home party, or if it's a Facebook party. Parties lead to parties. So I wanna encourage you, if you're feeling kind of stuck and you're feeling like, ugh, I don't have any parties going on, one party can bring you plethora of parties. So don't get discouraged and don't get too focused on like this huge picture and just focus on the smaller things. Focus on one party. Let me just get one party on the books, right? Like, so just take it one at a time. And then once you get that one party, okay, let me get one more party on the books, right? So just take it one step, one day, one ask at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself by thinking about, oh, I need to reach out to 70 people that are on my list of 100, just one name at a time, one by one. That's how you're gonna do it. So um, if you do not already have an open house booked for this new catalog season, and or if you haven't already held one, like I'm telling you right now, there is no excuse at all, no excuse not to have a new season open house party or a new season party of your own. There is literally no reason why you wouldn't want to do that. I am having mine this Sunday. I saw Shelby had hers a couple weeks ago. Like I'm seeing open houses for the new seasons left and right in our team. So many of you are doing this and kudos to you because there's no reason you shouldn't. It's crazy not to. We have a beautiful new catalog. We have gorgeous new fragrances, gorgeous new oils, like Hello, new warmers, new diffuser shades, new products. Like, you need to be sharing this with people. If you're not sharing it with people, if they're not smelling it, why are they going to want it? So, I want to encourage you. The very first booking that you need to have on your calendar is one of your own. Now, I say there's no excuse because there's not. Like, if you can't have one at your own home, do one at Starbucks. Do one at Panera. Do one at the park. Like everyone can invite their kids. The kids can play on the playground and you and all of your mom, all of your friends can sit under the pavilion, smell scentsy, you know, bring some picnicky, snacky things. If you can afford it, if you can't, then oh well, don't do it. Um, but just get together somewhere with your people and bring your scentsy. That is an open house. There's no reason you can't do it. I'm having mine on Saturday. I put it together in a week. Great job, Hannah. I love it. Way to go. So, um, and one party will lead to more parties. I promise you, if you do an open house and you listen to my training or the training of other successful consultants who are making it happen, then I promise you, you're going to book parties off of your party because they always breed more. So, all right. When it comes to booking parties, I'm not talking about an open house. We're talking about just going through, trying to book some parties. I'm not gonna lie, it can get discouraging. I totally feel you. I totally feel you. Like I told you today, just trying to invite people to my open house. I invited like 30 people and I, I don't think I got one yes. Invited them here to my open house. Now, I could let that totally bring me down and totally make me just stop in my tracks and say, whatever, why bother? I'm not gonna send any more messages, but I'm not gonna do that because what I want how I want to succeed, the way that I want my life to be, um, the example that I want to set for you guys, all of that stuff is way more important than hearing a bunch of no's. It just is. It is. And so that's why I'm always saying your why is so important. Why you're here is so important. Because if you don't know why you're here, then you're going to be like, screw it. I just got 30 no's. I'm done. There's no reason. I'm not going to ask any more people. I'm just going to get a bunch more no's. Right? Does that sound familiar? Do you say that? Stop saying that. Figure out why you're here. Be brave enough to say, I want this from my business. 
and I'm not going to settle for less. I'm going to go for it and I'm going to encounter no's and that's okay because I know that this, I'm more afraid that this won't happen than I am afraid of hearing no. So anyway, uh, this is where your list of 100 is important. Uh, as we're going through our booking blitz, you're going to be refreshing that list of 100, getting it all sorted out, making sure you've got everybody on it that you need to go. And then you are going to literally go line by line, by line, by line, by line. And you're going to ask every single person on that list of 100, every single person. Now, if you haven't created your list of 100 yet, you need to create it because it is the foundation of your business. Your business is either gonna be built on solid rock or it's gonna be built on the sand. And that list of 100 is your solid rock. Now I'm not saying it has to be 100 people, but I'm saying you have to create a list and we just call it list of 100 because that's a goal amount, at least 100. And do not think that these people on your list need to be your BFFs. Like I'm saying acquaintances, I'm saying, you know, your husband's coworkers, I'm saying your wife's coworkers, I'm saying your teachers, you know, your kids' teachers, I'm saying um, acquaintances, you know, from your last job, acquaintances from your current job, like your neighbors, like I'm saying casual people, not just people that are in your immediate circle, people in your warm network as well should be on that list. Go through your Facebook friends list, go through your phone, talk, show it to your spouse and be like, hey, am I forgetting anybody on this list? Like be really thorough about it. And then every single person ask something. What's the worst thing that could happen? You contact someone that maybe you haven't talked to in six months and they ignore you. So what? So what? Did you die? No. <laughs> um, so I want to encourage you to clean up that list of 100 and start reaching out to people as part of our booking blitz that we're going to launch here very soon. Um, and literally just calling, calling, Facebook private messaging. And if you're going to Facebook private message, use the voice memo because they're much more likely to answer to it um, and listen to it. Um, so just start asking, literally. Do, 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 do. Hey, Lauren, how's it going? How are things? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, good. I'm glad. That's nice. Yeah, I saw on Facebook you went and did blah, blah, blah. That's fun. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Just catching up, right? And then you say, hey, Lauren. I don't know if you realized, but I have a brand new Scentsy catalog out. Yes, new fragrances, new warmers, they're epic. I am looking for a couple of my awesome friends who will um, have a little get together. Uh, we can get together at your house, we can get together at Starbucks, we can get together at the playground, we can get together wherever. Um, but I'd love to just get together with you and some of your friends and, and bring the new scents and hang out. I would love to do that. Can we set something up? That's it. It's that easy. You just got to ask. You just got to put it out there. Um, and you have to put it out there in a casual, fun way, right? You can't put it out there like you're asking her for a huge favor. If you say something that sounds desperate, people are going to feel like they don't want to do what you're asking, right? So if you said something like, um, you know, hey Lauren, I'm having a hard time booking some parties. My calendar's looking really dead. You know, I'd love to do a party with you. You know, could we please do that? You know, if you wouldn't mind, you know, using words like that, make it sound like something people aren't going to want to do. And if you present it with the implication that they're not going to want to take you up on their offer, they're not going to want to take you up on your offer, period. Um, so try out the example that I gave you or create your own invitation sample that's similar. Um, and if they have hesitation, I always go for the home party first. Now, if they have hesitation about a home party, I'll say, well, you know, I have other ways we can party. Like I can give you little miniature testers and some catalogs for a week or two, and then you can just take it around with you. Or we could do a super easy Facebook party. And I would love to do that because I've actually revamped my Facebook parties and I'm looking for some people to do Facebook parties with me. Um, so that's what I would say because I have recently revamped my Facebook parties and I want um, people to do them for me so I get more practice and I can, you know, really put it out there. Um, so that's how I want to encourage you to reach out and book some parties, home, Facebook, basket, whatever you can get. Uh, Follow-ups. Follow-ups is another great way to get bookings. You are following up with people who have purchased from you before, so clearly they like Scentsy. 
uh, you're following up with them because you believe they probably are running low, if not are out of wax or oils or whatever consumables that they purchased. Um, so it's the perfect opportunity to try to book a party because you know they like the product and you know they're probably running low. Uh, so instead of just trying to pursue an order and get that follow-up person you're contacting to just order a six pack, forego the um, pursuit of a six pack in search of, or <laughs> forego the pursuit of a six pack to pursue a, book, a booking. I mean, if you get a booking, you're gonna get 200 in PRV, 300 in PRV, 500 in PRV. Or maybe it flops and you get nothing and she still just orders her six pack. You still got your six pack out of it, but at least you tried for a party, right? So when you're doing your follow-ups, never forget to ask for a booking. So like, let's say that you're sending an email to your customer who it's been two months and you're figuring she's probably running low on wax. You know, hey, Catherine, just contacting you because I figured you might be running low, if not completely out of Scentsy Wax. I have attached our brand new catalog, the PDF, because we have the PDF of our catalog in our workstation. So um, I've attached the PDF for our brand new catalog for you because I figured you're probably running low, if not out of wax, and I want you to be able to see all the new fragrance offers that we have. I know you're gonna love a bunch of these scents and so would your friends. I would love the opportunity to party with you and your friends. We can get together wherever is convenient, you know, a local restaurant or um, lounge, and you know, I can bring all the scents and we could just hang out. It'd be really fun, and you know, does everybody sniff the scents? It'd be awesome. Um, so just present it in a casual way, and you can always suggest other party styles as well. You don't have to just go in for the home party if you feel like you kind of know that person and you think they might favor another kind of party style you can always offer like one primarily and then mention the others whatever you kind of feel is best for that individual uh, social media is another great way to book parties so there's all kinds of fun little images that you can find to book parties so for example like a little image that has um Easter eggs on it, right? There's one in our workstation, or our workstation. There's one here in our team Facebook page. In our team Facebook page, if you go to photos and then albums and then spring and summer 2017 marketing photos, you will find a cute little picture that has a bunch of eggs in it and the eggs have numbers. So that's what I'm talking about. Things like that. Images that um, encourage people to have curiosity sparked and want to know what it's about. So you would say, you would grab that image and then you'd post it on your personal wall or your business page or whatever and you'd say something like um, I'm in a giving mood because you know you have to hint that you're giving things away you can't flat out say that you're giving things away because that's the way Sensi is kind of sneaky uh, or that's the way to be kind of sneaky and um, you know get around some of these rules that we have about not being able to offer personal specials so you can say something like i'm feeling really generous today uh, comment below with your egg number and then check your private messages for a message from me so that's a way that you can kind of get around that um, so people will comment the numbers and then send them a private message and say something like you know hey barbara i see you picked egg number two. Oh my gosh congratulations egg number two is an amazing prize that is a free three pack of bars of your choice when you book a party with me you can do a super easy facebook party it's over in one hour done easy simple um, you could do a catalog party with some little miniature testers that you take with you to work or wherever um, or i could come over to the house and hang out with you and your friends and we can drink and eat and sniff sensi um, whatever party style you want and you're gonna get that special gift plus whatever you're gonna earn from Scentsy. Which party style do you want to get set up with? You can send a message like that. So that is how you would play games on social media to book parties and you can even play games like that in your Facebook party as well. Um, I've even done one in my Facebook parties where I take a picture of um, some Mardi Gras beads like sitting on the table and I say they're each a different color and I say okay I've only got three beads the first people to claim these three beads are gonna get the prize comment below so literally the first three people that comment the colors that's who I'll private message um, but what's interesting is other people will continue commenting 
because they don't realize like they're commenting quickly and they don't realize that other people have already commented. So I private message everyone. I don't care if it's three. So like even if you didn't want to do that, you could put, have like 10 Mardi Gras beads laying there, however many you wanted to book or whatever. Um, so there's so many games that you can play on social media to try to book parties. I've even been trying to think about like how can I go live and do some kind of booking incentive, um, but it draws people in. I don't know. I was, <laughs> I was literally thinking that it might be funny, and I didn't say this to my husband because my husband would be all on board. He'd be all about it. But I was thinking, oh my gosh, how funny would it be to actually, with Easter coming up, how funny would it be to like actually take eggs and um, boil some of the eggs, um, hard boil some of the eggs, and then not and play some kind of game like that with my customers where it's like, okay, you know, book a party and um, I, I don't know, some kind of party where like, I literally like smash eggs on my head and some of those eggs would be yolky and gross. Like, and my husband would be the one smashing. Like I thought something like that could be really funny if you incorporate a way to book parties out of it. So I've just been trying to get creative and think about what can I do that's gonna draw social media attention in a live video to help me book parties? So I've been trying to like think about that. Um, so if you guys have any ideas, I'd love to hear your ideas. So comment here um, and share if you've got any ideas for um, getting engagement, something that would really draw people in, they'd wanna watch. I mean, that'd be pretty funny, wouldn't it? To see me smashing an egg on my head if it had yolk, I mean, that'd be pretty gross. It's good for your hair though, so I would, I would suck it up. Um, and plus I'd book, hopefully be booking parties out of it. So I don't know. So basically it'd be like you numbered your egg and then like, I don't know, like they booked a party and then I would smash that egg on my head, you know, something silly like that. Um, so anyway, I'd love to hear your ideas, um, uh, as well. So social media booking games and then booking games at parties. So obviously when you're at a party, like a home party specifically, um, it's really, 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 um, easy to book parties. It's just all about your language and um, what type of focus you're having. Like if you're not focused on booking parties, you're not gonna book parties. I am always focused on booking parties. And yes, there are some parties where I don't book. I'm not saying that just because I focus on them, I always book them. But the majority of time I do, and it's because it's a priority and it's a focus. So at your parties, make sure that you're playing booking games. Um, I love Christina Stainbrook's um, like game, which is basically like free. Um, you're using a showcase, not a showcase brochure. You're using a product sheet or a product list, whatever you want to call it. And you're giving that to people and you're telling them to go through and circle, you know, whatever they like. So basically kind of like it's the Toys R Us, like Christmas catalog, right? The big toy book that comes out at Christmas and kids are like, oh my gosh, going through and circling everything. It's kind of like the same concept. Um, so she uses that to book parties um, and she's got a great training video on it that you should totally go and watch. So go to Christina Stainbrook's YouTube channel to see that video. Um, I like to play the dice game. That's like my favorite booking game because I don't mind giving away prizes. I appreciate the tax deductions. I appreciate the tax write-offs. Uh, so I don't mind giving booking games or giving booking incentives by playing booking games. So I will do things like um, the dice game where there are six squares and every square is a different prize. And so when they roll the die, they get whatever prize they rolled when they hold their party. Now, I think it's important that you don't say the word um, qualifying. I hate that word. I think the word qualifying freaks people out, intimidates them, makes them not interested in what we're talking about. So well, I will just always call it a party, a party, a party. And then when I'm sitting down or I'm on the phone with them and I'm coaching them, I tell them a party's not actually a party until we have $200 in subtotals. So I want you to know that. So all of the hostess gifts, including the one you would get from me, are not um, gonna kick in until you have a $200 party. So that's how I explain that. It sounds so much better than, well, you have to have a qualifying party. With your qualifying party, you can get such and such. I hate that. Now on Facebook, of course, when you're marketing this, you have to say qualifying party, but in a home party setting or in a one-on-one -on -one setting, when you're talking with someone, you don't have to say qualifying as long as you explain that a party isn't a party until it's 200 in PRV. Um, but yeah, so I do other things to book parties at parties like my um, booking beads. So my hostess 
Every single home party, my hostess wears three Mardi Gras beads and each one of them represents a party. I tell her that prior to the start of her party. So I'll say, you've got these three fun beads, each one of them represents a party. So your goal is to get rid of all three of those tonight. And you know what's really special is when these parties are held and they qualify, you're going to get a half-priced item from Sensi. That's what that perpetual party reward is, right? So she knows she's got three more half-priced items coming if she gets them taken. And that's all from Sensi, that's not from me. So I also tell her, hey, just so you know as well, if you get all three of these taken tonight, I'm gonna give you a special gift from me. It's something over there on the table. So I'll point to my table and I will tell her this, and all she's getting is the bar of the scent of the month that's sitting on the table. It's not like she's getting some huge, amazing prize. It's just something small, but she doesn't know that. She sees my table over there and her wheels are turning. She's like, ooh, what am I gonna get, ooh. Um, so when you focus on booking games during your parties, whether on social media or in person, um, you're gonna book parties off of parties. And also when it comes to basket parties, you've gotta educate your hostess because with a basket party, your hostess is everything. She is the consultant, basically. So she has to understand why you want her to pass the pouch and why it's rewarding for her to pass the pouch or pass the party. You want that hostess to know, hey, when this party is passed on and someone else does their own, you're gonna get a half-priced item when that party is held, so or when this party qualifies. So it'd be big for you to pass this on. And I'll usually tell her, hey, if you do pass the pouch, I will give you an extra half-priced item. So I'll offer her the perpetual party reward on her own party too, like to help motivate her to do it. Whatever it takes, you know, like if I don't have someone that I need to give that perpetual party reward to on her party, I'll gladly give it to her. I don't care. You know, it's worth it. It's worth it to get a booking. It's worth it to give up a half-priced item that you want for yourself to get a $200 basket party, right? So um, it's always, it's always better to think long-term and how is this action gonna help me long-term? Are my long-term results better? Do they outweigh what the short-term sacrifice is? So anyway, um, those are some of my tips for you uh, for how to book events, how to book fundraisers, and how to book parties. Now, starting tomorrow morning, we are gonna kick off our team or group-wide booking blitz. Now, what is a booking blitz? A booking blitz is where all of us as a group come together for a set period of time to pursue bookings. So now that we have had this very thorough training tonight on how to book events, how to book fundraisers, how to book parties, the next thing I want you to do is set a goal. Set a goal. How many events would you like to book within the next two months? Meaning, specifically, the rest of March, April, and May. So two and a half months. Um, how many events would you like to book over the course of the next two and a half months? How many fundraisers would you like to book over the course of the next two and a half months? And how many parties would you like to book over the course of the next two and a half months? And I'd love you to even break down the parties. So like, okay, I want one Facebook party each month. So three Facebooks. And I want one home party each month. So three home parties. Um, I'd even love you to get specific like that. So set a goal of how many events, how many fundraisers, and how many parties you want between now and the end of May. I also want you to start working on your list of 100. If you don't already have your list of 100, start working on that ASAP. Tonight, really, if you can. Um, and if you have one, pull it out, go over it, make sure that it's up to date and accurate and um, use your workstation, use your Facebook friends list, use your phone contact database, whatever you gotta do to make sure that your list of 100 is up to date and accurate. Because tomorrow morning, um, there's gonna be a Facebook event here in our group page for this booking blitz. So you're gonna wanna join the event and then in that event is where we're gonna be talking about all things booking blitz. So it's not gonna be here on our group page because I don't want our group page to get overwhelming. Um, with notifications about the booking blitz. So I'm going to create an event for this Facebook group. So it's easy for you to find it um, and easy for you to join it. Uh, and so in that booking blitz is where we're all gonna be like shouting out our successes, shouting out as we're booking parties and things like that. Um, so I'm gonna create like an, a little image for you to share every time you book a party. And of course, there's going to be prizes for uh, participation, prizes for people who book a lot of parties, like 
there's going to be prizes, of course, there always is. Um, but the biggest prize of all for any booking blitz is your prize that you receive for a better month, for a more full calendar, which equals a better paycheck, right? That's obviously the ultimate prize. And that's why you want to participate in our booking blitz. I don't care if you just want one party each month, that's fine. I don't care if you just want one fundraiser, you know, next month, like whatever you want, I want for you, right? So it's not about like, oh, I want you to do this because I want you to have 700 parties. No, I want you to have what you need on your calendar to achieve your goals. And I know it's something. I know you're, you didn't join Sensi because you wanted nothing. I know you didn't join Sensi because you, you know, could care less about sharing it or you could care less about making money. I know you joined Sensi for a reason. So let's do it. Let's make it happen. And, and your calendar, again, as I said at the beginning of this training, your calendar is the best sign of the health of your business. So is your business anemic right now or is your, your business thriving? Like it, your calendar will tell you that, right? So I'm super excited to kick off this booking blitz tomorrow. I hope you guys are too. Um, and I forgot to say the booking blitz is going to run through the end of the weekend. So you're going to have until Sunday evening. So it's going to be all day, Friday, all day, Saturday, all day, Sunday. Now, when I say all day, what I mean is throughout the day, as you have a moment, send messages or make phone calls or whatever. So, you know, Saturday, you might have an hour window of time. You can work your business Sunday. You might have 45 minutes, like wherever you've got time throughout the course of this weekend, make time to participate in our booking blitz. And it's going to continue from Friday all the way through Sunday evening. So you have three full days to work on bookings. And I know if you take my advice and you start implementing these things, you are going to book an event. You are going to book some fundraisers. You're going to book some parties. I know you are. So who is excited? Who is ready to increase their bookings on their calendar with some of these tips they learned tonight and participating in our booking blitz this weekend? Who is excited? Let me see some thumbs up. Let me see some hearts. I'm excited because I need some stuff, more stuff on my calendar. Um, I have three events this month and two basket parties and my open house. So that's all I have for March. Um, and at, right now I have like three events, I think for April. Um, so of course I need more bookings myself. So I'm psyched about this because I, you know, need to dive in and do this right alongside of you guys. So I'm super pumped and I hope you guys are too. So be looking for that Facebook event tomorrow here within our group and uh, let's kick off this booking blitz and let's make our calendars rock for the next couple months. Thanks for hanging out for our Facebook or our live Thursdays. Uh, again, remember it's every other Thursday. So next week we will not have a live Thursday. It'll be the following Thursday. So thank you guys for joining me live or watching the playback. And I look forward to cheering you on this weekend throughout our booking blitz. Bye guys.